What's going on there, folks? Uh, good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Monday, the last day of July, July 31st, 2023. It's about 12.44 p.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity looks like a 1.6 here into Northern California, also a 1.4 up into the Alaska region. Uh, overnight, we did see a little bit of activity uh, back building here across the Tonga Trench area. Notice some deeper movement quakes uh, being triggered here south of Fiji. Let's go ahead and check out first the west coast and see what's going on here for California activity. Uh, latest shows that earthquake here just into the um, desert out here around just north of Death Valley. A 2.2 near Independence, California coming in within the last hour. Mostly smaller microquake activity here in Southern Cal, although we're getting a little bit of a cluster here just off the San Andreas Fault there, the southern segment. Um, slight swarming in this area today. Nothing big, but uh, a little bit of movement kicking up here in the last 24 hours. Also a little bit of activity here across central California along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Here off the Calaveras Fault here, it doesn't look like there's too much activity today. Uh, the latest shows a 1.3 within this region earlier this morning about two o'clock or so uh, for northern california a little spotty not too much activity up here to chat about as uh, far as recent activity goes and up into the pacific northwest this is where all the trimmer activity has been confined over the past week or so let me pull up the trimmer map cascadia trimmer has been uh, fairly heightened in this area uh, specifically in this area and it looks like that is leading to slight uptick in earthquake activity here across the surface regions and also very close uh, to the Cascadia subduction or the Cascadia uh, plate boundary here. This earthquake coming in um, last night uh, eight kilometers deep for a 1.7. Now that is out there in the uh, the fold and thrust belt where a lot of the strain builds up here for the next big earthquake. That earthquake uh, again, um, not a big one, but uh, it is kind of in a scary area, so to speak, because this region obviously is capable of producing a much larger earthquake here. Um, and there's that uptick here across the Cascades. I believe this is movement with the trimmer that's been taking place here just adding a little bit of further strain at the the crest level so to speak at the surface some micro quick activity at best there for now uh, yellowstone national park a little bit of movement here across the eastern portion of yellowstone looks like uh, some movement in the mid one range let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here see what we have for the latest information statement uh, or at least seismograph stations here there's that uh, earthquake activity here across the eastern portion of the park a couple smaller spikes of an earthquake there but as you can see for the most part uh it's fairly calm here across yellowstone not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening for now uh rest of the country let's see if we can get this mouse to work correctly a little bit of movement outside texas aside from that things very quiet on the eastern portion of the state's and across the Caribbean plate here, we are still seeing some activity over the last 24 hours. Um, here across the Middle America Trench, some fours and threes kicking up here in a cluster. Of course, this is around the, uh, the Gulf of Fonseca region. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but as you can see, pretty good cluster still going on in this area. And let's see what the EMSC is reporting down here across this area this is the last 24 hours here on the map still showing a pretty good cluster out in the gulf here just north of this volcano last week uh, this is going to be the last week of all the activity when it was pretty much heightened um, see what we got in the last hour only one upstream earthquake a 2.7 uh, but aside from that looks like the swarm is just still ongoing although not quite the intensity is what we've seen there uh, over the over the uh, weekend and last week still worth uh, watching though as I uh, haven't really seen any major adjustment or any uh, further active volcanoes stirring up in that area big island of Hawaii most of the movement here across the Pahala area with the latest of 2.2 just offshore 
31 kilometers deep. Into the Alaska region here, a little spotty, not a whole lot going on up there in Alaska currently. Just some small microquake activity where the 1.4 is coming up here into the, um, the area. Coral Kamchaka Trench, this earthquake here from yesterday, that's a 4.6. Not really seeing any further activity. Looks like a 3.6, a little bit further south here along the plate boundary there, just off the coast of Japan. Most of the movement, as noted here today, uh, across the globe has been centered across the Indonesia Islands area once again. Uh, some threes and fours stirring up out here. 4.2 along the Java Trench, and some further movement up here into China with a 4.7. Uh, a little bit of activity stirring up there in Australia with a 2.6. And there's that deeper activity across the Tonga region. New Zealand, uh, let's go ahead and check that out real quick to see what we have for the, for the uh, latest uh, the latest statement here. All right, where's my GeoNet servers? Oh, how, how come I always lose those? It's so weird. All right, 4.6 two days ago. Okay, we're interested in the recent activity. Um, there's a 4.4. That looks like it's further up along the Kermadec Trench 38 minutes ago. Uh, a couple smaller quakes here around North Island. 2.7 just off the North Island here outside of Gisborne an hour ago. And uh, aside from that, though, it looks like mainly small microquake activity there on the map today. A quick glance at the earthquake drums for the uh, New Zealand area and um, looks a lot less active today I would say not a whole lot showing up here far as uh, any large earthquake signatures looks pretty quiet all right so let's see what else we have across the area Mediterranean regions here mostly smaller threes and twos across the area some older movement there from yesterday out in the um, well this actually looks like a newer quake that 4.6 here in the Atlantic I think nope that's from uh, last night mid-Atlantic Ridge out into the uh, one of these fracture zones South America region here some activity from yesterday uh, mostly seeing some smaller quakes up and down the Peru Chile Trench today so still looks like a mixed bag of earthquake activity um, with still fairly active conditions here across the Middle America Trench. Continue to watch that area and of course uh, pretty good clustering going on here across the Indonesia area. Alright, space weather activity here. Um, well, let's see, we did have some sea flare activity overnight. Actually, it looks like maybe we had an M flare, very low M grade uh, M flare. Kicking up here, looks like maybe a 1.6 from last night. Looking at the UV filter ray here on the this little neat little image. Shows quite a few sunspots out here. Nothing flaring currently, doesn't look like it, uh, at least here on this image. A look at the magnetogram image here. Most recent image is going to be this one, I believe. And uh, still watching this one down here on the southern hemisphere of the sun. That's uh, getting complex fairly quickly. Notice the uh, intermixing of all the colors here and the growth of this sunspot looking fairly dynamic. That's probably about the only one worth watching right now out of all of these sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. Uh, right now we do have a 99% uh, chance for sea flare, obviously within that sea flare category right now. 55% chance for an M flare, X flare around 5% chance, and I believe that's going to be from that sunspot. Uh, that I just noted that uh, was getting fairly complex there, 3380. This is from last night, but notice how much more complex it looks today. All right. Uh, I'm not seeing any major aurora stirring up currently. There is a potential for G1 class storming as we head on into... Uh, this is going to be at 6 uh, to 1200 UTC time. That's going to be late tonight early tomorrow morning time frame with the UTC uh, so we'll see how that plays out but they're kind of forecasting here a G1 class storm over the next couple days here we'll definitely keep an eye on it for now very minimal conditions there across the polar regions including the South Pole there uh, down in Antarctica 
Uh, looks like Kevin jumped in on 3380. That's that sunspot I just mentioned here. Um, southwestern quadrant expanded on Monday in both size and magnetic complexity. This region is likely an increased threat for moderate to strong solar flares. Like I said, it made quite the jump from last night to today's image. All right, uh, weather outlook here today. Not a whole lot going on. Um, well, there's, I would say maybe a whole lot. There's a lot of thunderstorms, but far as severe weather potential, less than 2% for tornadoes. Uh, even the wind and hail threats are very minimal today with only 5% probability here across the area. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot. There's that thunderstorm outlook here throughout the uh, afternoon and late evening or uh, evening time period. Looks like uh, quite a bit going on here across the Rockies and uh, a little bit of movement out here towards the uh, looks like Missouri area. California high and dry. Not a whole lot going on here for California currently. All right, folks, um, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Still trying to wrap my brain around the moon last night. Um, not for sure why it was so low on the sky or on the horizon. Uh, quite a few folks did notice that as well. And uh, I'm just kind of picturing in my mind the models of what I learned in science. And it just doesn't match up to last night's activity. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay a little bit more attention here tonight and see exactly where it rises. And um, see where it sets. Because last night was a little on the sketchy side. I couldn't sleep last night because it was just bugging me. Uh, as to why the moon was so low on the horizon, uh, on the southern horizon here, and we are pretty much tilted, right? We're pretty much tilted. Here's the United States. We're not tilted that much, obviously, but say the sun is your direct view, looking directly at the earth. Your, your head's the sun, so to speak. In the wintertime, we tilt back, right? We go into winter. That would put the moon, right? And if I remember right, that would make the moon further south as well uh, on the horizon along with the sun but it's already pretty far on the southern horizon uh, that would make it not even visible come winter time so unless i'm figuring something out wrong i don't know it was a little hot last night a little heat got bit up by many mosquitoes um but yeah, I'm still trying to, I don't know. It just seemed a little bit lower than what I remember in the summertime. I've lived here, you know, pretty much my whole life outside here in California. I just don't recall the moon being that low um, in the summertime like that. Anyway, um, we'll move on. Have a good day. Enjoy your Monday if you can. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on things out here as far as earthquake activity goes. Not a whole lot going on here uh, as far as the live seismograph stations go. For now, things look uh, fairly calm out across the earthquake department for now. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Have a good one. And uh, again, try to enjoy your Monday if you, can, if you can. Have a good one. Peace out.